You have received me tips not feeling so hot. Achievement unlocked chasing shadows in the night. That well, one night. Not feeling so hot. Oh, it's gonna be. Wait. Yeah, so there's that. Sidney Coon's been feeling down lately. Maybe he's in a bad mood. I wonder. Maybe he's on his period. <laughs> oh, typical of you to say such a thing, Mion. Meechan, that's gross. Is anyone going to correct her on that? <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. I know that's a laugh, technically, but I'm still right in my head. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know who's speaking, so I don't know. Give me that K-chan. Maybe. I don't know. I think K-chan was in that car post, um, tubby middle aged guy, right? Yeah. No mistake. I wish you would probably fed him something fishy. He's so serious. K-chan's face was so pale. You see, you might not know this, but he's actually a messenger of Oya Shirazama. Huh? Uh, what do you mean? Whenever he shows up, someone is demon away. No lie. Oh? Is that so? You had full out when Rika chans mom drowned, right? I full out she was visited by Oishi. Well, you mentioned it, it happened before Satoshi comes transferred out. Transferred? Ha <laughs> You're so sweet, Rana. This time he's appeared before Keichikun. So Keichikun's gonna be demon away too? An empty silence in the air. And then it will suddenly drop. By loud laughter. Well, that was vague, wasn't it? It's intentional, though. This music! I said I liked it, but come on! Throw in a different track here and there, come on! When it's like played endlessly, it just sounds too melancholic, and I'm sure that's because it's supposed to fit the mood. But still, man, it's making me feel like... Uh, this was the first time I'd ever worked with such clarity. It was 5.59 moments before my alarm would go off. Doesn't look that early. I was amazed at the position of my eternal internal clock. I had made preparations for the next day of school before I went to bed. I tried quickly to set it to say no floor. It appeared that my mum was still asleep. My breakfast or lunch was ready. Yesterday I just uh uh unnaturally declared that I would be leaving early day, so it could be. I slapped a jam and some bread and topped it off with instant cookies. Uh, just as I was finishing up breakfast, Mum was ready to make some bread. Hi, Keisha, you're up early. Is there some sort of school then? Not really. Answering bluntly, I picked up my bag and stood after stuffing into something two slices of bread down my boots. I'm leaving already. What about lunch? If you don't wait a bit, I can I can't make it. If I wait for her to make my lunch, then it would end up in the same time as usual. If I did that, it would raise the chances of me running into Renna and Neon on the way. Yes, from today onwards, I'll be able to go to school again. I'll be fine for today. What will you do for lunch? I'll slip out and buy some bread or something at the store. Really? Then, here's some lunch money. Be sure to bring me back to the seat. I took the thousand yen bill for a moment and slipped it into my pockets. It's pretty early, it's trying to turn up this early as well. Uh, no, just me. Did you tell them the time that you're leaving early? I have no reason to tell her every little detail now, do I? I find it difficult answering on to all those questions, I made an early face. Uh, tell Ren and I went ahead when she comes. Hey, can't she wait? It's not that I didn't trust my parents. I just couldn't rely on them. 
my curtains. Don't me, I can only hold that way. Get I'll sleep it that way. You know, I think the reason why. I, well, it's I've done that in all of freaking videos as well. But in this case, I feel like the reason I'm like doing these silly, stupid voices is to relieve some of the tension, you know. I could only have a bar right now. My mom's and my voice was cut out by the slam of the world. For the first time since I moved here, I had it down the road to school. Up until now, I had always walked down the same path of the flying pond each day. So, I always met with the same people at the same places. But today was different. I didn't meet the people I would normally, and nobody was at the places where I would have normally met them. Can you imagine if that was my actual voice? Of course, there was some spot where we usually met, then there wasn't anyone at the spot where we would have met up with me on. The limbs of the trees shuddered in the morning air and the brightness of the sun. It was a completely different type of morning from what I was used to. Without a doubt, it felt strange. It left me with the impression that I had destroyed the illusion in the I had set up for me before it had enough time to bear all of the props needed. Hey, babe. Hey, Kichikun, you're so early today. Is everyone leaving early this morning? The person who called out to me was someone we always passed by as they were taught nowhere work as they actually appeared. Their name was, uh, I forgot. I voice acted it was Renner, though. <laughs> Whatever. Well, of course, this wasn't the spot where we usually passed each other. Uh, I woke up early today, so I thought it would be a good chance to aim the face. That's all. Well, I forgot to run a few. What about Rana Chan and Beyond Chan? I don't know what gender you are. Are you by yourself today? Uh, yeah. I've been asked the same type of questions my mum was asking. Since then, the same uninteresting, vague way manner. It wasn't funny being asked where Rena was each time I passed by someone. But maybe it was to be expected. It was because for so long we were always together so immediately. Even now I felt that if I had not done, we could still be pretty. Stop, Kate, you! not think about nothing. You spent all day yesterday thinking about how dangerous it was to get soft and do it. Beep! A car horn bled from out of nowhere. Can you imagine if that's actually how a car horn sounded? Even though I was walking lost and thought that horn was way too close. Is it gonna be Oishi? Probably. A mechanical behemoth barreled at me from behind, catching me completely off guard. By the time I turned around, the van's hulking chassis was almost on top of me. Okay, it totally isn't. I've seen plenty of cars veer to the opposite shoulder to avoid uh, pedestrians, but this car was doing the opposite. Oh yeah, I remember this. Felt like felt like there was somebody on the opposite shoulder and the van was swerving in my direction to avoid them. I remember this. Forgot all about this. That blissfully ignorant train of thought delayed me from realizing something much, much more important. That large mass was hurling right at me! Was it going to hit me? The inside of my head instantly flooded with a painfully cold liquid in that moment to seem before me in all time itself. And it went all uh, negative, I think, in fact. In the silence of that frozen moment, I compared the van so close that I had no way to dodge it, and my body, the other hand, twisted awkwardly in order to look behind me. There was no way I could dive out of the way in my current position. If I lost focus now, this moment would unpause, and I would probably plow over, caught in this silly pose. Bend my upper body over towards the paddy by the side of the road. If I went far enough, I'd get away with just being hit by the side of the road. As soon as the thought crossed my mind, the temporal stasis was shattered by the deafening sound of a man. The side mirror struck my shoulder, sent me spinning all through the air like a top. Locked in my contorted position. <laughs> Sent tumbling through the air, I crashed into the muddy paddy by the side of the road. My entire body was soiled and drenched. But the choice I had made in that instant was unmistakably for the best. I was covered in mud, but when the alternative was being hit by the car, it was as close as I could be to being unscathed. Rising out from the paddy, I had enough in me to glare over at the stopped van and yell profanities at the driver. 
Not sure if he was able to see me, but the van sped off. So, wait, damn it! What they call a hit and run, wasn't it? I couldn't help but continue yelling out the fanatics. The scream from the incoming mud hurt me more than any piece of wounds. I swung to the muddy paddy and made my way back to the road. The crime, god damn it! Shit, I'll drag you down and sue you! I got looking for a van, I'm sure I'll find in this little building. The path I was on had rice paddies on our side. It had become so narrow that one car could barely fit through. It wasn't a place you could stay at full speed in a car, let alone pass by the engines. Oh, it was a narrow road, but the car just now was closer to my side of the road than the other when it he went, uh, went past me. This is the curse of just the ground to press the dark cloud while laying it down. It was a little bit of a little bit of This wasn't just a hit and run. That car just now was trying to run me over, wasn't it? Thinking back, I did feel there had been my car creeping up on me slowly for a while. That's right, this unnerving blood and music and sound. Perhaps soon as I'd parted ways with that person for an egg and a walk, I had a feeling the whole time. If it had wanted to pass me, then it had no choice, I guarantee. One day I would have felt suspicious and turned around sooner. So I've lost some force and I was kicking myself without realizing it was that sort of. And then, when the path became narrow and there was no one else in sight, he drawed it. If I had hesitated for even a moment, the result would have been no laughing matter. As the adrenaline rush from nearly being run over subsided, and the realization of just how terrifying the perceived events were sunk in. There was no doubt about it. That van was intensely trying to hit me. A cold, vicious sweat seeped from my scalp and slid down my back before dripping off. Dribbling off. I struggled to avoid falling into a bed. It was still the possibility that this was really just an accident. Calm down, Keiichi! Also, don't be so naive, Keiichi! Say that relax, we'll get you killed next time. You need to always be on your toes. Don't give them any opportunities. If my enemy will really have to kill me even next time, they would use the more reliable methods. If that time came and I was acting like I was now, Oh, I, I'd been covered in... Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I'd been covered, uh, being covered in mud was the price I had paid for my own night. Covered in mud, but without injury. Not even a spring. I guess this was what you would call the silver lining. Or the brown lining. Ha ha ha. I began walking again, this time cautiously. I wouldn't even show a hint of callousness. I suspected only Ren and the others up until now. No, it was because I had suspected them that I had believed there were no other enemies. Which is sounded said so, didn't he? There was the possibility that all the families of the village were involved. Sorry, really my son, keep on the street right there. You're sure it's been right, carry on as usual. Wouldn't it be safe to throw myself up in my house? But the minute I abandoned my regular routine, never another man may would abandon theirs as well. That was just too horrifying of a thought. I recall the tale of Oishi Zan told me of when Hinemizawa was still told to get to Uchi. A frightening tale of an entire village of demons hunting their prey, surrounding them and eating them alive. One must not interfere with the demons. One must pretend not to see it. The enemy were numerous, all the village families. The villagers with their unwavering faith in the curse would do nothing to help me. The strong sun flash of sunshine made me slightly dizzy. I had no idea what was going on anymore. But I suspected it was the work of man. Okay, I I suspected it was the work of man. Someone would put the head out. What, what was coincidence? What was intentional? Who was my enemy? Who was the survivor? Gander? No, what I really, truly wanted to know was. How did I end up with a prepared little bit of an old bullseye painted on my back? Eventually, an answer in a form I could understand will appear. I don't care when it will happen. Because until then, I cannot die. Just like, oh, but then when he understands it, he'll be like, okay. Just like, he's alright with dying then. That alone filled my resolve to fight and will keep me alive. Then a bird shits on him.
Well, it wouldn't be any worse than, you know... Well, it would. It would add insult into the mud. I remember seeing the mailbag in the gym storage shed, but there was a padlock on the door while barring my entry. And at the very least, I wanted to get my hands on it before everyone else arrived at school. I'd circle around the school ground as impatiently. Real rundown looking school, isn't it? It seems like boarded up windows. But all I could find were things only pieces of lumber, nothing that I could bring into the classroom easily. <laughs> yes, back to that. Why are you carrying around a piece of lumber, Katie? It's not your business. And then I had an epiphany. I should search inside the classroom. If it was something in the classroom to begin with, then it wouldn't be a problem. I could tell the Iron's indoor shoes were still in their lockers. Good thing I came early. Nobody else was here yet. I wondered, what could I find in the classroom? I didn't think I could find an especially effective weapon like a bat. But it couldn't be helped at this point. Until Jim's story shared was open, I needed to find a substitute. A lingering hint of naivety. That word come up a lot there, and they whispered that there was no way I'd been attacked to school. But such soft ideas are no longer protect me. To think that they were slowly making their way into parts of my life that I had once fought in... The worst case, my own home might not be safe anymore. That was an incredibly frightening thought. But I believe that not considering the worst case scenario would have been even more frightening. Anyway, I will survive! So long as I live, then I will definitely be able to skip the labyrinth of nonsense. This labyrinth of nonsense, definitely. My place in the classroom came to an impasse. That much was to be expected. There was no way there would be anything that could be a weapon in the classroom. In case of emergency, there was probably nothing I could do but swing my own chair out. Just to speak in that. It's like, what about the chair? My gaze landed on a locker that had come to the use of this notebook. I have been on this before. 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 I have been there's one for each person in the class that will line up. And... Of course, there was one for me as well. Oh yeah, there's supposed to still be a track suit in my locker. Seeing me covered in mud would be strange. I should go change later. The first idea of the weapon. If one of my classmates came, it would be hard to rummage through all the lockers. I simply began opening the lockers one by one. You are basically just filled with things like gym glue, special items, and umbrellas. Well, maybe an umbrella! Oh, he's even thinking it. An umbrella. If I couldn't find anything better, then this would have to be my weapon. I was about to give up on finding anything decent when I opened a locker that held exactly what I wanted. It was without a doubt a metal bat. It was well worn and pretty beaten up, but there was no doubt it was usable. In that locker that reeked of mill, they also hung a baseball uniform. It was probably the locker of a student in the POE League or something like that. So that was the case, then he dug it out for him back. At that time, I could hear the voices of the children scuffling their way noisily in from the hallway. Amongst them, I could make out Rick Chan and Satoku. Now, finally, some goofy music. Good morning. My, my, you're quite early this morning, Kate Stan. I nonchalantly hid the bat I was holding behind my back. What is with your outfit? You're covered in mud. Uh, yeah, I had a little incident. Uh, don't change now, so I'll cut me some slack. With that said, I began taking off my clothes and Tokyo began to blush just as I expected her to. She did in front of a lady. How do you know tech at all? I wouldn't think that a lady staring at someone who was changing would be the one lacking in tact. No changing room for the boys to just deal with it. As the dog of feigned discussion, she went into the hall, still blushing. Conversely, Rick and Chan continued to stare at me and plan to change. Uh... Who's speaking in Cage, Cajun? Rick and Chan's a lady as well, but I don't think it would be appropriate for you to be watching. Oh, lady, so it's fine. She deliberately parted and looked at me with upturned eyes. And starting now, you're a lady. If I'm a lady, then I suppose I must. 
Rika Chan appeared to be satisfied with being considered a lady who made her way to join Sotoko in the hallway. Just as I breathed a sigh of relief, Rika Chan stopped suddenly and turned back towards me. Are you gonna stop playing baseball? It seems that Rika Chan didn't notice the bats. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, uh, still a bit out of shape. So I thought I'd just try practicing my swing. I think it's wonderful you're taking care of your health. She was talking like an old lady despite her appearance. After saying that, Rick Chan started to leave again, but stopped and looked back at me once more. Please don't lose that bat. It seems she already knew I took it out of someone's locker. There's no name on the locker door. I didn't know whose bat it was, but I wouldn't be bothering it until they complained. It wouldn't be for long, just until the gym stopped if I could Chen's open. The quick of changing into the back seat, I checked the time. Still have plenty of time before class began because I came to it. Took the bat in one hand, I went to two yards. That was, of course, the bat's not clean. Please to make it known I would always have a bat on me so I could practice my swing. At some point, the sunlight had become even stronger. Disregard my classmates as they made their way to school, I took my position in the shadow of the school building. It was an academic type, and no, I wasn't much of an athlete either. I might get muscle pain if I just suddenly started swinging. I should at least start out with some warm-ups. I doubt anyone would think I was doing something out of the ordinary, which was the exact opposite of my actual mental state. I gripped the bat and swung lightly. That freaking sound effect, man. The bat was by no means light. The weight would make it a reliable weapon when I needed it to be used. Of course, I could only pray that the moment I needed to use this little weapon would never come. Just carrying it around could lead to her attacks against me. At least that's what I hoped. Hi, K-Chan! What are you doing? Being bombarded with such a hysterical voice, I jumped. Oh, Cage Coon, I on the baseball team. The baseball team, <laughs> I gotta repeat it. It was Rena and Mion. I was surprised to hear you went off ahead. What are you doing, Cage Chan? Can't you tell by looking? I'm practicing my swing for the championship. You can say it's part of my diet if you want. Diet? Cage Chan, are you really that fat? Bet you didn't know, I actually have a beer belly. It's plump and jiggles. Pump and tickles. Renna, you don't have to imagine something weird like that. To disrupt Renna from imagining something that vulgar, I ruffled her hair mentally. Well then, hope you make it, uh, regionals at least. Still matter what cheer you on. Regionally speaking, it seems that Oshima High is pretty strong. They say their southpaw come hit us good, it's amazing. Good luck. Seems it made me out of some kind of local prodigy, but oh well. Well, if I really did make it to a championship, it would be a cinch. After all, I'd be the pitcher and catcher. I'd pitch the ball, then run past the lap ball I just threw, and change over to being the catcher in a first of super incredibly explosive speed. I left Riley at the ludicrous image. Went back to my senses, I smashed the bat against the ground. Damn it! What am I laughing at? I pound to the ground over and over. With each impact, the reverberation traveling through the bat stung my hands. <laughs> you ever do that? You like got some like and you hit it against something hard, and it just like it does that reverberation. It's like oh, it's just like what do you even do that for, dumbass? They make me smile like that, I'll, I'll, yeah, <laughs> don't allow anyone close to me, don't trust anyone, no matter how many times I tell myself that this guy made me smile like that, i yeah, I already knew quite well that there were demons dwelling in my smiling grin, but I just couldn't believe it, did that kind of spit personality really exist, like how Renner confessed to the doctor, was he simply being possessed by a assurance on her? Or would the supernatural being like Oyashira Sama really exist? Or would it be possessing ever in the rhyme kill me? Yeah, that would be wonderful. No, it wouldn't. If only everyone were actually my friends all along and everything was all just Oyashira Sama's fault. Damn fool, can't you, my bar? Come on now! I yelled.
yelled out, throwing out all power from the pit of my stomach and raised the rat violently into the air. Stop being so strong! I screamed out with all my might, so I bleed the metal black and told the grand over and over. The very impact of my weakness was being beaten down. What if he breaks the bloody bat? Well, probably not. It's fairly strong, isn't it? Forget. Learn to be soft. Be hard. Ha ha ha. Know your enemy. Like hell, I'd let them kill me. My shoulders leaving up and down through my ragged breathing. I heard the first bell ring just as I gone down. I wonder how much of the plot is left. I guess with a sudden realization. That was the final bell. As I felt all the tension drain from me, I let out a deep breath. My mind was in a muddled state for much of the entire day. I didn't feel like I was feeling like that. There's a yawn again, I can say it felt especially comfortable, but I felt a kind of relief that the sanctity of the school part of my day life had yet to be mine. How long would I have to keep on living like this? I could only grit my teeth and bear with as this living hell was literally no one away at me. Hey, Chikun, come on, it's club time, club time. The sound of Brennan's voice brought me back to my senses. Come on, come on, K- uh, Come on, come on, K-Chan, stop sleep now. Bring a desk, a desk. Everybody was moving their nest to go as usual. I'm assuming that was Leon. That's right, it was happy fun club time. Oh, those were the days. They were only just not even that long ago, <laughs> really, were they? But then the plot suddenly got all dark and shit. But I had no intention of taking part. I have had to stump the contents of my desk into my bag as I'm prepared to go home. It was a week, and it just to avoid having to actually say, I'll be going home now. What's this, Cape Chan? You plan on going home right away again? Me and Sam quite disappointed. I'm just not moved, could you just let me be for a while? The turn of the words that spilled from my mouth met me on the disapproving glare. It felt like the air in the room had dried out. Toko looked like she was about to say something, perhaps persuaded by the mood. It was a word from stage five. Nobody said a thing. I took that to mean that I could leave if I wanted. But the collective gaze of the four of them, like the tiny pins used to mount an insect in the display, it held me in place. When there was the one who cut through the heavy mood. Which can you just been like playing with girls, I guess, I guess. She said it in such a melancholic tone, with this melancholic music, that sent a wave of pain racing through my heart. If this pain was going to kill me, I wanted it to be the soft part of me that could still keep I tore at my chest while tearing out the pins that held me in place. That's not it at all. I had only they hurt myself by saying anything more, so I swallowed my words. But everything was off there. Speak a word to me as I left. Those damn Higurashi! It was a long, dull trip back home, but I didn't lose focus. I firmly squeezed the grip of the bat, which was already soggy from sweat. You know, if you live in an area that actually has kakadas and you freaking read all the freaking Higurashi novels, You'd probably never be able to listen to them the same way again, would you? Just like associated with that, just like ah. Realizing that I wiped it down with my sleeve, or something would happen, I wouldn't want it to be slippery. Since this morning, I'd become especially sensitive to the presence of cars. Understandable. Even while walking, my ears prickled up and sought out threatening sounds and presences that could be closing in. And that was why I could hear it. Without a doubt, there were footsteps. Those footsteps had matched up perfectly with mine for a while now. From what I could sense, it was just one person. But I had no intention of being careless. Did they intend to follow me like that car this morning until we were in a good location to assault me? It wasn't a good idea to keep walking like this. I stopped walking and looked back. 
The wooded path crowded with trees responding with sounds as if there was nobody there to begin with. But I wouldn't be fooled, for certain footsteps were following me, and just as I stopped, the footsteps stopped as well. Meaning the person following me wanted to keep their distance. That was without question, proof that I was their target. I held my breath waiting for that presence to uh, and it can start moving again. The trees rustled with the sound of the wind. The Higurashi also joined in the dissonant chorus, trying to throw my folks into disarray. Had five minutes passed, or had I been like this for a whole thirty minutes? It was so hard to breathe that I might have suffocated. It seemed I would be the first one to panic, and I doubt he was lurking in the shade of that tree with bated breath. Then I'd make the first move! I fixed my grip on the bat. I raised it up to my shoulder to be ready to swing at any time. Hey! I know you're there! To all of my mind, I screamed at whoever was lying in the shades of the trees. But the presence in the shade didn't budge. Until the moment I found them, they had no intention of revealing themselves. I know already! I know you're there! I screamed out angrily at them again, but even still, they didn't move at all. Then I'll go over there myself. They'll do vigilance. I approached step by step. Stepping into the tree's shadow, I saw a human figure there. That figure was curled up like a small animal. Renna! When she realized I'd found her expression softened. She seemed apologetic, but wasn't going to speak a word. You have some business with me. I wouldn't accept that silence and scream the question at her. I'm not really accept that. Rana was in a panic of tears welling up in her eyes. But it was obvious that she had been following me. What about the club? Uh, since you're not, I'm, I'm not. That shouldn't matter. Don't mind me in this play. But, but I'm just worried about you. Think about how I'd been acting up until now, and it wasn't hard to imagine that my behavior could have been perceived as strange. So Renner was concerned. A quick glance, that's how it would seem. But I wasn't going to let my guard down that easily. Even if that was really the case, she still wouldn't have, have to do something like try to tail me. She should have called out to me when I was leaving and gone out right with me. But Renner didn't do that. She kept her distance from me and matched my walking speed. On top of that, she matched the sound of her footsteps and devish, devish, devishly tried to hide her presence from me. Then, after she realized Nora she was there, she held her breath as she tried hiding from me. She wore a timid expression that would force one to take pity on her, without a doubt, she was tailing me. Stop following me. Oh. Still glaring at Renner, I continued walking onwards. After I had walked for a bit, she ignored my command and began walking again, so I yelled at her once more. I told you not to follow me! I feel that my house is in the same direction. And walk ahead of me, I'll start walking once I can't see you anymore. <coughs> I moved out of the way and waved my bat violently to urge her forward. I'd like to go home together with you. Making a pitiful expression, she meekly squeaked out the words in a voice that she knew would cut into my heart. That agitated me to no end. I knew it was a lie. It was a lie! If you wanted to go home to Galilee, then you should have called out to me. Now you're just blurting out random lies! I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! It seemed that the seething anger within me was written all over my face. Even without me saying anything, Renner had understood what I was feeling inside. To get it, then go! <coughs> I swung the bat, urging again to walk. Renner looked back and forth between me and the bat and started walking hesitantly, then stopped again. Go on then, hurry! I'm going, uh, so please stop with the bat. I I it's scary. Renner got herself while pointing at me holding the bat. She may have realized that I wasn't planning on using this bat for baseball. I lowered the bat, but still godly opened the way for her. Go. There's no problem now, is there? There was nothing else she could protest. She passed by me timidly so as to not set me off. As I watched her pass by, she stopped completely after having barely moved at all. Hey, don't stop! Then a powerful gust blew past us, while I my face with dust. The 
dusk got into my eyes and cleared my vision. While rubbing my eyes with my left hand, I swung blindly with the bat in my right, protecting the small opening I had presented. But Rennie didn't even try to attack during that opening. Attack me? No. She hadn't budged an inch. I could tell from the sound of her fluttering skirt and her wings. As her skirt settled, so did the silence. At that moment, the voice inside me immediately warned me of impending danger. I was caught by surprise. The smell of the air had changed. Suddenly realizing that the air around me suddenly felt like a calamity was about to befall me. It was like the air had suddenly become visible concrete, like Renner and I were locked in the space. Renner didn't move an inch, also unable to move, scared at her back. Renner was the first to break the silence. Instantly, she altered her stance. I felt like I had just witnessed her shift from Renner into the other person who looked like Renner. But the voice was one I knew well, which filled me with a kind of bewildering pity. Carelessly, I felt relief upon hearing that pitiful voice. Uh, well, excuse me, but uh, can I ask you something? Too shy to even turn around, Renner squeezed her voice out desperately as she trembled. What? Uh, well, well, why do you have a bat? I wonder, I wonder. The question when I asked was by no means unexpected. You can carry whatever I want. But, but, you didn't have one up until today. Why so suddenly? It's all right if I decide to leave something suddenly, isn't it? Is it strange that I have a bat? Because, Keiichi, you're not the kind of person to play baseball. It's weird. I can tell what kind of answer she was looking for, and I was getting tired of answering her. I just suddenly got the urge to play baseball. Is that so weird? It's weird. She answered instantly, and that annoyed me slightly. I just suddenly wanted to play baseball. I went to the practice of my swing, so I'm carrying around a bat. What's strange about that? Strange. Weird. Definitely. Why is Keiji Kun also... The ramblings are annoying me. Is that that strange for me to have an interest in sports? I try to sound a bit more threatening during the conversation. Until my suspicions that Renner were clear, I had no other gift to answer her questions. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, don't get so angry. Renner still didn't turn around and spat out words of apology one after the next. I guess one last thing. Tell me one last thing. I don't feel like talking anymore. Hurry up and go. I yelled loudly at her, causing her to flinch like she had been struck. Seeing her in such a pathetic state caused my heart to ache sorely. But even though she was afraid, she stubbornly kept herself from moving. Before I was able to threaten her again, Rena asked her final question. Why is that bat the same too? What did she mean by the bat was the same? I had no idea what she was talking about. What are you saying? I mean, why is the bat the same? I don't understand what you mean at all. Say it clearly. Even still, Rena didn't turn around. After inhaling deeply, she screamed. I mean, why is even the bat the same as the Toshikun's? Toshi's being... Huh? Upon hearing that name out of the blue, I became dumbfounded for a brief moment. By Satoshi, the Shimuna student who transferred out last year. No, that couldn't be. When I tried to cover it up by saying he transferred, Rishi-san told me quite clearly that he was missing. It was a student who sat at my seat until last year. He was believed to have been deemed away by Ori Kirasama's parents. I didn't know the details about his disappearance. The aunt he lived with was killed the night of the Watanagashi by a drug addict. Not long after that, he suddenly vanished and he was now missing. That Satoshi and I were... what? My gaze fell to the back of my hands. Could it be... Satoshi Hojo? It was a bit difficult to see but that was what was written on the white tape at the end of the bat. I see, so this was Satoshi's bat. Oh, this was Satoshi's bat. If nobody was using it, I'd borrow it. That's not a problem, is it? <laughs> like, as soon as I saw the explanation put off there, he's just like, no, gotta have a menacing toad to it, is it? Well, that's not it. The way Rena said that made it seem like this bat was something that should never be touched. Like it was some sort of offering at a shrine or a memento of the deceased. I could only stand there perplexed and unable to respond. Renna continued speaking without waiting for a reply. Why are 
Why is it that you don't exact some drinks so Toshi can pick when it happened to him? I mean, I was talking about more than just about belonging to Satoshi. It's the same with Satoshi Kun. He joined the baseball team, but he didn't really like baseball. What does that have to do with me? Satoshi Kun also only started walking around with a bat one day. He joined the team, but he wasn't attacked to play sports. Well, what about it? I closed my mouth before I could see that out loud. Listen carefully, Keishu. We're just trying to tell us something important. Toshi Kun also one day came to school all by himself all of a sudden. Just like Keiji Kun. And one day he suddenly started practicing his swing. Just like Keiji Kun. And one day he suddenly began carrying a bat and around with him. Just like Keiji Kun. And one day he suddenly. And then one day he suddenly. What? And then all her words. Then his sudden silence brought a hush back to the surrounding area. It was then that I could find that just the content of the entire conversation. Uh, she was saying my chain of reactions was exactly the same as Satoshi's. What was the meaning of this? Up until just now, I'd forgotten all about Satoshi. I never paid much attention to uh, much thought to him in the first place. Not only that, I didn't even know anything of what he'd done. Actions today could have been my own creation after all the planning I had done. But they did the exact same as Satoshi's. Then Satoshi, no, more importantly, both Satoshi and I acted the same, then it was a real good possibility that what happened after would be the same. Renna, that day, what happened to Satoshi? Renna knew. She knew what became of Satoshi. No, forget about what happened to a guy in the past. Renna knew what was going to happen. Me! Answer me, Rana! Stoshi, what happened to him? That I grabbed Rana's shoulder violently and forcibly turned her around to face me. Is it? As I faced her, I felt a jolt travel through my entire body. Oh god. I told you, Kitchkun. I was that per it was that person that I didn't know. At least it definitely wasn't the Rana Ryugo I'd been talking to up until now. The voice just now didn't have a trace of the trembling or emotion that it had had before. The amount of regret I felt for turning her around so carefully was unsurpassed. That gaze that peered like a gold, cold needle. The smile on her face that invoked an image of having been carved out by an eye Chills went down my spine. My mind froze under a layer of rhyme. And it rhymed. Ha <laughs> ha. The surrender's eyes pierced through mine, leaving me unable to look away. And it's to remind me of the fear from that time before. And on this exact bloody same road, isn't it? The Renner brought her face close to mine, so close that I could feel her breath. Her face that filled my entire field of vision. Then, her sharply shaped lips grew even sharper, like the curve of a crescent moon, she grinned. I told you, Kitchkun. After the short pause, when I repeat the same words again. Don't you come to see it transferred out? Transferred meaning what? What Renner meant must have been some new definition of transfer that was previously not aware of. My throat and lips dried up, but I couldn't even acknowledge what I had just heard. Oh, I could have swallowed down my own saliva. It would seem that Renna saw that as a nod. She pulled her gaze back and spryly stepped back two, three paces. As she did, my legs gave out and I fell to my knees perfectly. Renna and me on my knees underneath her emotionless smile. That had to be a very odd sight indeed. Seeing me in this, that pathetic state, she now scoffed at me nor held out her hand. So I could now stand nor escape with her gaze shooting through my eyes. There was undoubtedly a metal bat in my hand, but right now, it was useless to me. It was like a fly caught in a web. Yeah, he didn't account for that, did he? <laughs> Just like paralyzed with fear. Actually, that's typical Japanese horror in general, isn't it? Like, you know, like, things like, uh, with grudge and the ring and all that. It's just like, how, it's just like, it just fades away, doesn't it? You don't see how they die. It's like, they'd be like, oh no, they died of fright, or they just like, the reason why they don't just like, get off their ass and run, is because they're paralyzed with fear. 
You don't see that much in Western horror, though, do you? Well, well, Western horror does sometimes have the supernatural kind of elements, but it feels like Asian horror has it more than what Western horror does. Heavy sweat bead it all over my body, I can feel it dripping from my skin. But she won't kill you, Kijikun. Random finally released me from that cage of time after what felt like an eternity. The question was missing something important and was incredibly vague. Once again, I felt hard urging her on. Do what? What did she not want me to do? Oh? Transfer. Hear she when they cry. Oh. Demon unlocked pinch hitter. 